Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. I am of course Maddles and today I have got a best of one game for you, aka a ladder game, and it is between Neeb, the red Terran player in the top left, who is up against Fugazi, the blue Terran player in the lower left. So that of course means they are in the close by air positions or the close vertical positions whatever you want to call it, and therefore it's not cross-spawn, it is a TVT, so there's lots that could be going on, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen, the map in Tomb Valley, and well, what does that put in store for us? Well it means the, the natural isn't too bad to take in TVT to be honest, because the bunkers can come down, wall offs aren't too important, it's fine, it doesn't mean that they expand towards each other for the natural, which is quite interesting, although to be fair, there's not much that can utilise here, I mean if this was in Heart of the Swarm, we'd be seeing Reapers, 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 due to all of this cliff area, and the fact that you can get from your base to their base in a matter of seconds with a reaper but unfortunately reapers aren't buffed in wings of liberty yet so they probably never will be either it will only be the expansion but of course it should be great fun to watch this game nonetheless there will be tanks there will be medevacs there will be vikings there may even be hellions there is a small possibility that we'll just see mmm and just massive mid-game pushes that are intended to beat your opponent before they get out that epically difficult to break siege line but while we're waiting to see what these two are going to do, and it's worth pointing out they're already going for a different strategy. Barracks first compared to a gas first. Um, let me do say that if you do like my cast, make sure you always like the video. If it's the first time you're coming to one of my games, flick over to my channel after this one, watch some more, make sure you like all the videos, because liking them actually helps more people see them, which is really, really important. And also, if you like the game or my casting or have anything cool to say, make sure you leave a comment, because comments are awesome as well. And lastly, Make sure you subscribe because I get new games up every single day of the week. But enough self promo for the moment. These two are certainly going off on a very different footing. It looks like Neve's going to be going for most likely a one rack expansion, judging from what he's got at the moment. The lack of the gas, the fact he's got his barracks down now, he's going straight into the orbit command. He should be in a good spot to do that. That's compared to, of course, Fugazi, who is at the moment sitting there with his first barracks only just completing. His orbit command should start. There we go. But he's got this gas and he's banked up quite a large amount of it already. Straight away chucking down the factory. Gets scouted though by Neeb. That scout is really, really important because it shows precisely what is his opponent is doing and shows how different their strategies are. Now, how do you deal with this when you see that coming? Then, essentially, you chuck down a bunker. Usually, you probably put down quite a defensive bunker in this position. I put one back here just to make sure that you can cover most of this space and also around your entrance. And as a result, you're then pretty much safe from anything that your opponent could throw at you. So far, we've got the tech lab coming down, so this is an interesting setup already. Judging by the fact that there's still three guys in gas and there isn't a second gas, it leaves a lot of options viable. But mostly, it's seeming like these two um, are not going to switch. It's going to be actually a stop or so. It's going to be a Banshee with Helium Marine is the most likely thing, judging by the amount of Vespian we have available for the Blue Terran. Meanwhile, the Red Terran happily getting up double gas after this. So very, very normal. One Rack's command center into double gas. It's a, such a standard build. And to any lower level or lower league players watching, the one bit of advice I give you actually, rather than worrying about specific build orders or specific timings or anything, just look at their overall progress because the timing that these players get out their expansions and things like that and the number of units, the number of workers, etc. is going to vary to yours because you're going to be up against different strategies. As long as you know the overarching ideas that say this build was a gas first, then straight up to a 1-1-1, one, 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 one factory, one barracks and one starport, going into then an expansion, you know you're going to be relatively fine, and exactly the same way with Neeb, it was a one racks, command center, double gas, then into the factory, and also an engineering bay chucked on, so the overarching theme there is, hey, let's get out a good economy, good upgrades, and get into the mid and late game is where the focus is going to be, and just to survive the early game, so that's all cool, anyway, these two Hellions are chilling down here, we've got, of course, the bunker up, so that is potentially going to be a threat, the first Banshee is about to be complete, though, and that is exciting times, because that Banshee could offer a lot, but Neeb reacting to it perfectly, throwing down the missile turrets, and the reason he's positioning one up here and here is now there's no way for that Banshee to get in easily. It could come up through this side, but Neeb straight away knowing how to react to that, chucks a missile turret there, that leaves the only real angle you can go in at, which would be through here, but the trouble is then you're exposing yourself directly to the bunker, so Neeb in a very, very comfortable position, and you might be thinking, hasn't he thrown, um, committed too much to the static defense wall? The answer quite simply is no he hasn't, because he's got the extra economy from having this much earlier command center and natural base compared to his opponent. So as we can see, he should start pulling ahead, even though he's lost a couple of SCVs already, he's quite comfortable 
in the sense that he's got two SCVs produced at the time, double the mules and everything quite nicely there. Now we do have a Viking out for Fugazi, ready to start taking that air superiority. He's also getting out a Raven, so some really, really nice compositional thinking as we can see here. So definitely liking the play out of Neeb. Fugazi as well is doing great. We've got the plus one air weapons on their way. Uh, air weapons plus one infantry weapons, as well as cloaking field coming down for the Banshees. So it's going to be going into Banshees here. So that's the purpose of the Viking and the Raven, is to give detection to Fugazi, ready to deal with those. But so far, looking at the work count, 34 to 27, you can really see Neeb pulling ahead. Now, of course, he won't get much further ahead now due to the fact that, obviously, the second orbit command is there. But overall, his production is going to be better. His income as we can see is really quite a bit better and has been for a long period of time which means that he's happily getting out an awful lot of very important things. The plus one infantry weapons I would argue is actually the most important upgrade he has going for him at the moment because that is going to allow him to engage so cost effectively in the mid and late game in having the upgrade advantage. Anyway, double factory now coming on so it looks like Fugazi is going to be transitioning into a mech style play or not even transitioning just going for a mech style play which should be super fun to watch. Um, if he had blue flame hellions he would do a lot better against these marines but of course that's not a huge problem at the moment. We've got more barracks being added on here at the moment for Neeb and considering the fact that he is now getting on just well purely an awful lot of barracks it would appear that he's going very very marine heavy marine marauder and that is good news for him as he does now just have the cloaking field coming in for the banshee that first banshee already sniping away doing some nice damage but in come those two vikings and the raven as well so straight away this is going to get shut down pretty hard and as long as he gets cut off it should get taken down but for the moment it's not looking like it's going to it might just manage to sneak away which would be a massive win for knee because of course once it gets away he can repair it up and get much more use out of it but he's got to be careful because one more volley off and it's going to go down and he does manage to snipe it for Gazi with a good little win there. We can see Neeb losing 400 resources in total and of course he committed a lot to that push by getting out that cloak upgrade. So the fact that the Banshee did no damage at all effectively is not such good news for him. But we do have the plus one infantry armor, <coughs> stim starting, combat shield starting. And you can see there's a massive amount of production going down everywhere. Meanwhile, the Hellions just coming to check the third base. Don't know that the command center is up there at the moment. The rocks are getting taken down. Looking down here for Fugazi, he's still behind in the work account by quite a considerable amount. Actually, 13 workers is pretty huge, especially when your opponent has their third orbit command already up as well. That is really going to start hurting Fugazi. Getting up siege mode, getting up blue flame. So really teching ready for his mech composition. But the longer this game goes on, it's really rolling into Neve's favour just due to the much better economy he has available. We have the armoury coming up, allowing for 2-2 to get started once it is finished. No second armoury though, which I find, uh, engineering bay, which I find interesting because so many Terran players just get that second engineering bay once you get the armoury up for the double upgrade. You've got the money to support it then and you can really start dominating. But looking here, missile tight on its way up. We've got some more marauders added in. Concussive shell about to finish up. That's going to really help deal with these Hellions, those marauders. So good to see those out at the moment. The siege tanks. Just happily waiting at the natural base. Siege mode not done yet. Blue flame not done yet. And there's no chance of Fugazi moving out before they're done. He's just keeping the Hellions at the front in case he gets the opportunity to move in. But as we can see here, a good number of units is chilling around here. We do have four Neeb. This first tank out, but no siege mode getting researched yet. So that's just really waiting there at the time being. It sh siege mode should get started eventually. It's kind of essential to get it if you're going to be getting any tanks at all. So yeah. All in all, these two are looking fairly happy, but critical point, Siege Mode has finished, Blue Flame finishing up as well, and that is a signal for Fugazi to start moving across the map. The scan goes off though, sees a lot of Hellions, but doesn't see anything else. That's the important thing, sees just there is an exceptionally large amount of them. The scan did pick up on the Vikings though, so knows there may be some movements coming across. We do have... Neeb trying to position his army carefully and he's got to have a good engagement if he's going to go for this and he's moving out actually and that may not be the safest thing to do because he's now suddenly going to get himself completely trapped and this is possibly the worst position Neeb could be in right now his army completely isolated from the rest of his forces and those siege tanks are able to get a great position there and as we can see large amounts of damage being done absolutely everywhere the point defense drone helping massively in reducing the damage being taken and this mech army for Fugazi is in a great position Neeb may just go for the counter attack it looks like that is is thinking, forcing Fugazi to either pull back and defend or take a considerable amount of damage. But that siege tank is up and it gets a great siege. Two good shots off and off the stim with no medevac support. These units are very, very low on health for the push coming forward into the natural base of Neeb at the moment, who does not have 
anything really to defend. He's got a handful of units up in his main, but he's waiting for a couple more production cycles. And of course, he's got those four tanks at the ramp of his natural to deal with. So this is a full-on base race situation now. And all in all, it's going to be tough to see who's going to come out on top. Damage-wise, Neeb has got to really engage cost effectively. The tanks are the big threat. The Vikings are giving Fugazi the vision on the high ground though. The SCV is getting pulled. If he takes the tanks out, I'd say Neeb has definitely got this and he has managed to hold for the moment. But what damage has been done down at the natural of Fugazi? Well, if we look at the workers killed, 13 killed to 10. The worker count still very heavily in Neeb's favour, who does have his third base and his fourth command centre up already. More of um, supply depots going down. These Marauders will now get cleaned up, but the point is, any damage they did there was certainly very, very good. And Fugazi did not do the necessary damage, in my opinion, to really hold Neeb back. His production cycles are now absolutely going crazy. He's got so many units in production at a time. He's got the two, plus two infantry weapons nearly finished. He's got plus two infantry armor started, as well as plus one vehicle weapon started. So he's actually started his vehicle upgrades before his opponent, who is going mech, which is pretty bonkers. But just great news for him. The thing I'm really noticing though is there's no siege mode, and I don't know if there's a, spe a specific reason he hasn't gone for siege mode other than the fact that he's spending all of his money expertly at the moment. But Neeb is really engaging well, especially coming back from getting in such a bad position earlier on. That one Viking is not going to win the Viking fight, but we can see the tanks are going to win the ground fight for Fugazi right now. And Neeb has to be exceptionally careful in engagements like those because these tanks, if they're able to siege up, just do so much damage as we're seeing here. Some medevacs finally hitting the field. But with such a high Viking count for Fugazi, those medevacs aren't going to last too long. And if the tanks are allowed to get into good positions, as they are repeatedly being allowed to do so, we can run into some problems for the Red Terran player. But Neeb does have his fourth base up, so he is two mining bases ahead of his opponent right now. So as long as his engagements are okay, and as long as he deals with this force, he should be fine. And as we can see, Fugazi has even pulled an awful lot of SCVs ready in order to repair off this mech force. So that is quite good thinking straight away. The natural base being somewhat abandoned, but look at that damage those Hellions are managing to do. All the SCVs lined up so, so badly, but this is one big counter-attack coming. There's one tank siege. The other tank is now just sieging up, but of course this mech army is starting to move forward, repairing everything and anything they can for the time being. That Banshee from Fugazi is doing good damage to the Marines, trying to stim forward. SCVs are going to have to get pulled inevitably, but it's pretty much a full-on base race in my opinion now, we've got the army of Fugazi trying its best to push forward, but the natural of Fugazi is getting taken out pretty badly, as we can see here. We've got the orbital command getting taken down. Apparently I was disconnected from Battle.net there for a second, that's pretty irritating. But, all in all, we've got Neeb trying to pull back. He's got to either commit to the push, or he's got to somehow defend all of this. And, as we can see, this push is making its way up into Neeb's main base, and his army is not looking that substantial there. They are actually pretty equal, but it's the fact that Neeb's army is split, but that could be exactly what he needs. He's going to be able to completely surround Fugazi's mech force. Most importantly, coming in from the back to deal with all of these tanks. As long as you can get the good push in and attack from both angles at once, the tank splash will be minimized. This SCV's starting to go into this force as well. We've got Neeb coming in from behind as, at the same time, but most of his force has been cleaned up pretty comfortably, pretty quickly. And there is the GG, and Fugazi manages to hold, despite Neeb having such a greater economy, showing how potent mech really can be if it's allowed to get up into full force and into your base. So, guys, remember, if you did enjoy this, uh, guys and girls, I might add, that make sure you do like the video, leave a cool comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Thank you very much for watching. I was Maddles, and bye for now.